This week on My Classic Cars. We'll visit Rick Schmidt at NPD headquarters for a walk through 60 years of American automobile design. Then we'll take a close look at his 1971 Buick Boattail Riviera. And we'll check out the latest technology in epoxy floor coverings. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning into my classic car, home of the certified car knot. Well, this week we're at National Parts Depot's facility in Ocala, Florida. Not only is this one of their four distribution warehouses around the country, but this particular one houses the car collection of NPD owners Jim and Rick Schmidt. Now, I've been here before, but these guys always pull out some cool stuff to look at when I come here. I just can't stay away. So joining me now is Rick Schmidt to tell us what we're going to look at today. Rick, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Great, and you know it's great to be back. I do love coming. It's here. good to see you again. <laughs> well, you guys, you guys have cool stuff. Like I said, what'd you line up for me today? Today, I've pulled out a microcosm of what I feel our car collection collection represents. I've got cars ranging from the 20s all the way through to the 70s, six decades. And what we're going to do is kind of a walk through the evolution of American car design. Ooh, how cool! Now, you know that's going to be a great trip through time. But you guys have got a really, really unique collection here. How many, how many cars do you have? We've got roughly a little more than 150 cars here on the premises, and uh, and it's just a eclectic collection of, of you name it, mostly American, 75% unrestored, extremely low mile originals. That's really what our focus that's is. That's one of the unique things about this collection that's always struck me about. I mean, you've got stuff that I, that's never even been dealer prepped in some cases. Yes, we've got cars back in the, in the 50s and 60s that have less than 20 miles on them. We've got uh, a 1940 Continental we're going to take a look at with 600 miles on it. We really go after the super ultra low mile stuff that's, that's still in original paint, still the way that it rolled off the assembly line. Yeah, there's just nothing like that is <laughs> no there well, really hey, is you know like i say I, I can't i can't wait for this this trip through time so what do you say we we get to it absolutely all right Let's man go. okay so i guess we're going to start in the 20s with a with a case is this i mean this is a case like case tractors case implements exactly case? exactly and uh, people don't realize that case actually made automobiles early in the century i didn't <laughs> So what's the history of this car? This is a 1921 case. It started its life as a touring. It was uh, one of three cars purchased by a hotel in Colorado to be used as a livery. And uh, this one was, uh, was uh, fitted with a oh, it's fixed top by a Pueblo, Colorado coach builder. Can I open it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's a, this was uh, their winter car uh, with a winter top on it for, uh, for transporting guests of the hotel wherever they needed to go. Well, the windows don't roll down, but I guess it's cold. You don't need. You it's don't so want cold them in Colorado in the winter. I think that that was just the way they wanted it. But you know, in, in the twenties, and this I guess a twenty-one, right? Correct. Y you still had the look very much of a carriage. Yes. I mean, there's, there's, and it's very tall. I mean, very, it's very right. high car. Mm -hmm. Now, if we step up a decade, we get to what's perhaps my favorite car in your whole collection. This gorgeous. Lincoln here. I just absolutely love this car. What do we have? Here? This is a 1930 Model L Lincoln. It is a dual windshield sport Phaeton. Dual windshield sport Phaeton. It's, it's, it's a mouthful. Yes, yes, it is a mouthful. Yeah, in 1930, if you're trying to pick up a girl in a, in a nightclub, you really had This to, is what you wanted, right? <laughs> you but, had you a know. long time telling you what you drove. <laughs> no, really, this is what I have. But this, you know, it's beautiful. This is truly from the golden era of yeah. the automobile. This is a true classic. The lines are stunning. It's just much more style, much more, uh, much more grace to it, and the, yeah. and the Lincoln, while it was uh, uh, a conservatively clean design, still had all, all the beautiful. style. You could now, dual want. windshield. That windshield actually, you can uh, release the the fasteners on either side and swing it back closer to the passengers, and the windshield's there to protect them from the wind, keep the ladies' hats from falling off, mm. that kind of thing. Coming up, we'll take a close look at the latest technology in epoxy floor coverings and more from NPD's incredible collection. My Classic Car is brought to you by Grundy Worldwide Collector Car Insurance. In the garage today with the floor coating guru himself, Jerry Carafelli of You Coated. How you doing, Jerry? Hey, good to see you again, Dennis. Man, and the man responsible for this great looking garage floor. Jerry, you got a 
killer product with a lot of technology behind it, right? It sure is a great product with a lot of technology. It's a water-based hybrid epoxy system. Now that's different than some of the other products out there. It's got some interesting features that, uh, that make it as durable as it is. Now, you know, I've got a bit of a chemistry background, so what do you say we have an in-depth look at some of the chemistry behind U-Code It? The secret behind U-Code It's success? Ease of application. U-Code It is applied to a damp surface. That makes it go on faster and easier than other floor coatings. See, the tech heads at U-Coated decided to use water to make a new kind of epoxy with a unique third resin, a coplastomer that applies easily and forms a deep bond with the concrete. With other floor coatings, you have to break your back making sure everything is bone dry before application. But U-Coated goes down on a damp concrete floor. The chemical makeup of U-Coated is designed to break down molecularly in water, allowing it to penetrate into the concrete. This is one reason you coat it wears so phenomenally well. It won't peel or flake like other coatings because instead of just laying on top of the concrete, it actually forms a chemical bond. And since you coat it is a rubber-based product, it can expand and contract with the concrete during extremes of heat and cold. That same resiliency makes you coat it highly impact resistant. And of course, u coated is durable enough to withstand the whole gamut of automotive solvents and corrosive fluids. In a word, this stuff is tough. Tough enough to handle all the abuse you can dish out to a garage floor and keep looking good year after year. Uh, it reminds me of my days in the lab. <laughs> well, Jerry, you really have engineered some great technology into this product. I love it. Dennis, thank you. Well, you know, four years into this, uh, and I've, I've hit this floor with just about every imaginable automotive fluid, and it seems to take it all. Well, it's purpose designed, Dennis, to hold up to brake fluids, acid, fuels. All of that stuff. All the solvent-based products. Well, yeah. you know, in, in my cars, they're occasional use cars. They have a tendency to leak, and they leak just about everything. And, and, and I don't always notice that right away. What, I've, what right. I've been amazed with is I can have a spill brake fluid or, or, or transmission fluid. It can sit there for months. I can still come down, wipe it up, and it hasn't even discolored. That's the chemical resistance. It's pretty amazing. And not yeah. only chemical resistant, but it seems fairly impact resistant. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not getting any, you know, break up or it's not flecking off or anything, but I can even drop a wrench on it and it, 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 it can handle that. Dennis, it bonds permanently to the concrete. It's a rubber based. So I, get, I even get a little bounce off the wrench. Really? Yeah, well, it's That's a thin, pretty good. thin bounce, but, yeah. <laughs> but a bounce nonetheless. Well, with all the decorative options you've got, the different base colors, different fleck colors, you can really you can make a floor look as great as this one in the garage, but where else you find in people using this stuff? Dennis, they use it all around the home, uh, pools, patios, porches, basements, mudrooms, kitchens. Wow, in, anywhere you want to, you know, protect the floor and, and look great doing it, right? Right, it'll protect the concrete, protect the floor. And look marvelous. Absolutely. <laughs> well, hey, if you want to learn any more about the technology of U-Coded or U-Coded itself, log on to myclassiccar.com. So, Professor, is there, is there going to be a test? I, I think you've already had the test I, here, Dennis. I do. Uh, great. Yes! You, you passed. <laughs> I passed. Eastwood.com. Unique tools, coatings, supplies, and solutions for all your restoration needs. Next, we'll finish up our walk through automobile evolution. Welcome back to My Classic Car and Rick Schmidt's incredible collection of unrestored classics. But another milestone car that Lincoln did is right here, the yes, Continental. The Continental. And this is an extremely special Continental. This is one of our unrestored cars. This car has barely over 600 original miles on it. So it is the lowest mileage known Continental in existence. 1940. Yes, 1940. That was the first year. How do you how do you keep a, a car this many decades with only 600 miles? The on original it? owner actually originally purchased two. He had purchased a Cabriolet and then this hardtop, which is actually the rarer body style. They only produced a little over 50 of these. Unbelievable. It says Lincoln Zephyr in a lot of places. Right. Well, it was it was kind of crafted out of a Zephyr. It's and on a, turned into a and Continental. turned into a Continental. And he bought the second one as a spare because of World War II. He was concerned that if he needed uh, spare parts so this was for his, his parts car. This was right. his parts car. 
Wow. So luckily his cabriolet must have been fairly reliable be or he was able to get parts if he ever needed them because the car remained untouched in his garage. Unbelievable. And, and but very, you, you know, very European in its styling, very art deco Hence in the, the interior. Hence the name Continental. Yes, yeah. and, but you know, mm -hmm. world class. I mean, you're up there right. with Bentley and, and, and Mercedes. It's yes. just a stunningly beautiful car. It's it's no, it's one of the more beautiful cars that, that really uh, came out of the American and auto unrestored industry. unrestored original. And, and you can see too, it's, it's lower down than the, the Lincoln of the 30s, but if we take another Another step down in height, we got this great Merc here. It's great. I'm crazy about Mercury here. Right, right. One of one of the original low riders is 57 Mercury, where uh, where Mercury really did take another step forward in automotive design, really getting a low waistline, low roof line, and uh, and just a real knuckle dragging look to the car, <laughs> real real gangster the look. Cruisers did love them. Right. Now this looks pretty original too. This is another unrestored one. It's uh, it's 100% untouched original. Um, Paint, interior, everything. So this multicolored, multi-fabric interior is what rolled off that's the line. That's exactly how it rolled off the line. And this particular car is also equipped with the uh, 368 Turnpike Cruiser oh, motor. Yeah, so, yeah. so it was the hot rod of the of the Mercury li lineup back in 1957. Yeah, and these things they were hot. And it, this really was one of the lowest cars of its time, and it really right. set the tone for what everything that came after that would look like yes. in some respects, or at least its stance. Yeah, it was a landmark car. And again, if you look up the line, it just as you go back in time, they get taller and taller mm -hmm. but speaking of landmarks you probably the uh, one of the most significant cars in your entire collection is this one right here it the really 63 is. Impala yeah this Impala is very special in that it is the actual 50 millionth Chevrolet produced wow. it, it is the car and uh, it was uh, specially built to a to a higher standard of quality than what a normal assembly line Impala would have been because Beautiful color. Chevrolet really wanted they had a huge celebration the press was there Nelson Rockefeller drove the car off the assembly line. They wanted everything to be perfect, so the car received a show-worthy paint job from the factory. All of the uh, seams in the door, doors, uh, jams, and in the trunk are, are smoothed in with lead for for a clean look. And and it's just it is a perfect SS409, and it's yeah. only got barely over a hundred original miles. Really? Right. <laughs> so this one. This one didn't cruise very much either. This is a brand new 1963 SS409 Impala for all practical purposes. With power glide transmission. And yes. It is just gorgeous. So we've gone from the 20s up through the 60s, but I actually came down here to see one of your 70s, my favorite 70s. Every car. time I see you, you you're talking 71 about that 71 Riviera. 71 Buick Riv. It's just gorgeous. Well, we're I ready for you this time. We've got it all tuned up. I even charged up the air, air conditioning. So it is turnkey, ready to look at, ready to drive. drive. Absolutely. Yes, let's drive. Okay. No matter how rare your classic is, you'll always need parts. So check out this week's Classic Car Marketplace. Corvette Centro, caretakers of the legend since 1975, offers the most detailed generation-specific Corvette parts and accessories catalogs available. Plus, our user-friendly website allows you to search, view, and order parts anytime. Visit us online at CorvetteCentral.com or call 800-345-4122 for your free catalog. If you're restoring a classic GM car or truck, Classic Industries has what you need. They have the largest selection of original and reproduction parts and accessories in the business. Just call 888-GM-CATALOG to get your catalog. Or go online to ClassicIndustries.com and start shopping today. Find out why Classic Industries is America's first choice in GM restoration. Need parts for your F-Series truck, Bronco, Classic Mustang, Camaro, Chevelle El Camino Malibu, or Firebird? Then get your free catalog from National Parts Depot, the nation's fastest restoration parts supplier. Call 888-893-FAST now for your free catalog or visit nationalpartsdepot.com. Still ahead, we'll get up close with Rick's 71 Boat Tail Riviera. Rick pulled out one of my favorites from his collection of low mileage unrestored originals. Oh, baby. <laughs> Rick, 71 boat tail rib. I love these. These are some of the wildest cars GM ever made. It really was one, one, one of the most daring designs that, uh, that GM ever put the green light to. Now, it, it's very close to the concept car that preceded this a little bit. I think it was the Silver Arrow, but right. it looked a heck of a lot like this car. Right, this this car really is, it looks like a rolling concept car going down the road and uh, and it's very impractical from a, from a functionality standpoint. It's It's got huge dimensions, but very little cockpit space. Four, not a four whole lot passenger, of right? right. 
four passenger right. with two very small passengers exactly, in the back. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, but but you know, gorgeous car and, and typical of the cars in, in your collection, it's a, a low mileage unrestored original. Right, right? it's got 27,000 original miles, very well cared for miles because that really makes a difference and uh, all original paint is pretty much <sighs> the way it was built. Just beautiful car and, and you know, and the interior is very, I don't know, it's very sporty for something this big and it's very, very intimate. It's a, right, it's a good mix of luxury and sport. Uh, they worked in the, the engine turned uh, dash effect there. That looks cool and very, you know, very uh, cockpit uh, oriented. Right, the center console. The uh, tachometer there was an was a aftermarket uh, tach that the original owner installed to sport things up a little bit. And I've got the console pieces to put that back to original, but I haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, only it looks, time. It looks kind of neat there. You, guys, you got a few cars to work on anyway, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, original interior, too, unrestored here? All original interior, the carpets, the seat upholstery, everything's unrestored. Man, it, I, I gotta believe that's a good thing because nobody's repopping parts for these. There just weren't, weren't enough of them. There's, there weren't enough of them and there's even fewer left today because uh, through the sev late 70s and 80s, they, uh, they were just an underappreciated used car. So people many, just let them go, even just got driven into the ground. Yeah. So there, there are really no reproduction parts for this car. So if you don't have a good car to begin with, you got a problem. you're paddling <laughs> upstream. Yeah. <laughs> well, they only did this body style for, uh, for three years, 71, two and three. Mm -hmm. And I think 71 was the only one that had these wild Louvers right. in the trunk. And what they do, I couldn't tell you. I think they were just for styling Just decoration, purposes. huh? Right. Hmm. <laughs> but they, I think they went away after that. Also, I, I, I see th that this is It's hot enough a... today that we could probably cook <laughs> hot dogs on there. <laughs> but you had a center butted seam there on the back That was window. a one year only uh, thing also. The, uh, it's a two piece glass that's, uh, that's um, bonded in the center. And from what I've been told, the, uh, from rear end collision, T uh, testing or practical experience, they were finding that the uh, two pieces of glass were losing their bond and then jettisoning right into the. Uh, you know, that that can't be a good thing. It just no, no, definitely not. You'd either want to be short or you, or <laughs> or you, you would, or you be, would short. be short. Right. <laughs> All right, you know, big massive Buick. I gotta believe it's got a big massive Buick engine. Yeah, it's the got the Top Gun, the 455 Ooh. four barrel in it. Let's pop it open. Have a look. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's one long hood too. <laughs> yeah, takes a couple of uh, front car springs to hold this. Heavy one duty. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Now this was this is a 455 cubic inch. Buick had finally converted to telling the truth about how right. big the engine was. Right, right, exactly. That's it's a 455 cubic inch uh, instead of uh, in, in the, the foot past. pounds of torque is what they used right. to like. 445 was was mm -hmm. uh, that was foot pounds of torque, but this is 455. Cubic inch. Now it looks like the engines had a little freshening done to it. Yeah, it's all original under the hood, but we did uh, repaint the valve covers and the block. It was one of those snowball effect types of deals where we needed to fix a water leak uh, by the timing cover, and once we had everything disassembled on the front end of the motor, it just made good sense to, to uh, freshen that up. So that we touched, but the firewall and all the aprons and, and just all the accessories that you see in and around the engine compartment, that's all original. Well, you know, I mean, it looks great. Inside and out, how, how does it, it run? Just drive it now? drives as great as it oh. looks, let's, like a brand new one. Let's button it up. Alrighty. I mean, you you uh, pretty much know the drill. This is the time of the show. I say, hey, hey, let's let's take this out for a drive, but let's cut to the chase. What do you say? I drive it this time. No problem. Man, You're welcome. Let's go. Ooh, cool door handle too. Stay close. We're going for a ride in this silver bullet boat tail rib. Brought to you by Grundy Worldwide Collector Car Insurance. And by You Coat It, the official floor coating of Eastwood Garage. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Rick's 1971 boat tail rib is really a unique car, and I just couldn't wait any longer. Life is good. This is an amazing cruiser. This thing is so smooth. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it drives very smooth, and because the car's never been apart, it's uh, got low miles, it really does drive like a, like a new one should. You know what's different, though, and, and every time I get into a car of this era, first thing I recognize is how little the steering wheel is. It feels great. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, I, I remember seeing these things go down the road, and they were just, there was nothing like them on the road. They just looked awesome. Yeah, when I was young, I used to, these cars always caught my attention right away. It, it, if you saw one going down the road, that was the car you were looking at because it was just so unique compared to anything else you saw. 
and they had that, you know, with the, the way the thing's laid out, it's just this, you know, everything was so futuristic back then, so you get that that kind of Starship cruiser it was, feel out of it. It, it was the, one of the more exotic cars on the road. But like you said, I mean, it's, it's really, it is not very practical. It's a four passenger car. Yeah, and the trunk isn't very large, and look at how much hood you have out there in front of you. <laughs> you could land a small aircraft on that hood. It's just amazing. But this is a car that, you know, it, it almost looks like a lowrider without dropping it. Yeah, it, it does. They're very popular yeah. along uh, hot rodders and, and, and custom car builders because... Uh, well, it does you, customize well. They, they're radical stock and they're just unworldly when you really uh, when you really start uh, <laughs> playing with them, including on the, the, the brighter metallic colors. Yeah, a set of 20s on this. Uh, yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not that it really, really mattered back then, but you know, with the 455 and this thing, got it has to weigh two and a half tons. <laughs> easily, uh, easily. What, what kind of mileage would this have gotten? Oh, I would guesstimate somewhere between eight and 10 in the city and uh, 14 to 16 on the highway. If you're behaving yourself. It'd be typical yeah. if you're behaving yourself. But again, at what, 30 cents a gallon back then? Back then, was it wasn't, just before it, it wasn't nearly the issue that it is uh, today. Man, what a cool ride. You know, I love coming down here, Rick. Not only do you have great cars, but you let me drive them. Oh, <laughs> it's good for them to get driven, so whenever you feel like coming down, just tell us what you'd like to drive. I'll get it ready for well, you. Know, we could be doing this for a long time. <laughs> There's a lot of cars to get well, through. Let's talk yeah. about on the way back to the shop. All right, right? All right. let's go. Next week, we're heading west to Palm Springs, California for the 10th annual Palm Springs Car Classic. And we'll also take a look at rubber and how it ages on your car. So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring. Attention, my classic car fans. Go online now to check out our latest selection of DVDs. Order the Inside the GM Special Vehicles Collection. It includes an amazing look at GM's rare historic and concept cars, only $19.95. Or order the legendary Fords, Chevys, or Mopars DVDs. And now, you can get all 26 My Classic Car episodes from 2005 in one DVD set for only $24.95.